So this video is a review on finding the least common denomin denominator between fractions. Um, so I'm just going to kind of like quickly brush over the highlights of this. If you are looking for full instruction, I have other videos where I go at like a much slower pace on that. But if you just kind of need a refresher, then hopefully this will kind of help you with that. And if you feel you need more, check out my other videos. So let's just start with the simplest case with finding a least common denominator. So usually when we're doing this, it's because we want to like add two fractions. And there are two fractions with different denominators. So let's just see how well you remember this. So what's the least common denominator between 1 over 2 and 1 over 3? Well, the LCD in this case would be just 6. So I would take 2 times 3, and that would be 6. So that would be the LCD. And so why is that the LCD? Well, it's because 2 and 3 have no factors in common. So in general, when you have just two fractions and they have no factors in common, then you can just multiply them to get to the LCD. So this idea then of having denominators where they have some sort of factor in common, that's what makes this a little tricky. And by the way, just a quick reminder with how to use these videos. So you know, math is not a spectator sport, and so I'm, I kind of go through this, you know, and I expect you from time to time to pause things and write things down and think things over for yourself as you need to. So make this video kind of work for you. Um, I, I know I kind of go through it quickly because I intend for you to pause when you need. Okay, so continuing back to our discussion. So what is the LCD that then between 1 over 6 and 1 over 10? So I actually think this would be a great moment for you just to test your intuition. The worst that happens is you get it wrong, but I want you to pause for a second, write down, write it actually down, what is your guess that is the LCD between them, and why. So I want you to write one sentence of your reasoning for why that is. doesn't matter whether you get it right or wrong, just what's your reasoning behind it. Okay, so let's actually talk about this then. Um, so there's a lot of different ways of how you can find the LCD, but the way that I'm going to look at it is going to serve us really well with working with rational expressions. And it's, it's in my opinion, it, it's kind of the method that you can use over and over. So if you haven't learned this before, I, I would really request that you kind of open your mind a little just to being open to kind of learning a different way to do this. Okay. So to find the LCD, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to think about the factors of 6 and 10, but I'm going to think about it in a specific way. So I want to think about what number divides both of these. What's the largest number that divides both of these? And you're going to say 2. 2 divides both. So I want to write out these numbers factored using that largest number that divides into both of them. So in this case, 6 will be 2 times 3 and 10 will be 2 times 5. And that's actually the only way to write out the factorizations for both of these. So, you know, the, the, this isn't anything too crazy in this case. But the next thing that I want to do is I want to look at these factorizations and I want to say, what do they have in common? Both factorizations share this 2. And so this is really important then for finding the LCD because what the LCD is, is it's writing out kind of the combination of these factors without repeating any factors that they share. And so in this case then, they share the two. So when I'm coming up with what do I multiply together to get to the LCD, I only need to write that two down once because they both share it. The things that they don't share are this three and this five. So this is what I need to multiply together and this will get me to the LCD, which is 30. So this is a really great method that you can use in a lot of different ways. Um, it, it will serve you well in other applications. So I really want to use kind of this method. So let's try that again. I want you to actually like pause and write down that same amount of work. Force yourself to write out all that work that we just did. You'll see where this is going as we keep, keep talking about this. So pause here. Give this a try. Let's make sure you've got it. Hit play when you're ready. So 15 and 10, well, these are both divisible by 5. So 15 is 5 times 3, 10 is 5 times 2. So they both have this 5 in common. So then when I find my LCD, I'm going to multiply 5 times 3 times 2. 
So this is what they have in common. This is what they don't. So if I multiply those things together, I still get 30. So it's really important for you to write down all of this detail. Don't just do it in your head because this is actually like kind of putting together some reasoning that's going to transfer to other skills. So even if you could do it in your head, I, I want you to kind of get into the nuts and bolts of this. Okay. Okay. So let's do this one more time. Pause here. Give it a try. Hit play when you're ready. So this one's a little harder, I think. Um, so in this case, so I've got 12 and I've got eight. What's the largest number that divides both of these? So using that logic, four is the largest number that divides both. So 12 can be rewritten as four times three and eight can be rewritten as four times two. So now it's this factor of four. So, you know, it's, yeah, two could divide both of these, but then you would actually be missing, like that. that's not the, the largest thing that they share. So the largest number that divides both is how you want to write out the factorizations of these. And then that's what will, by like acknowledging what that largest factor is, that will make sure that you don't repeat it in the least common denominator, because that's what the idea of this least comes in. Um, if you don't choose that, that right number, then you end up like repeating factors. Okay. So the LCD then is going to be this four times this three times this two. So this is going to equal 24. Okay. So this is the first part of working with the LCD. And so usually we need to rewrite these fractions with that desired LCD. And so now I just want to touch on that skill. So if we go back to kind of our simple case of one half and one third, so we said that the LCD was six, so that was two times three. So this really illuminates kind of how we get now to these equivalent fractions. So what I want to do is I want to rewrite one half as an equivalent fraction with an LCD of six. So really it's what do I have to multiply two by to get to six? Well, I have to multiply it by three and whatever I multiply the bottom by, I have to multiply also on top. So you have to keep it the same and the same. And this is how you get to your equivalent fractions. So when I multiply these together, this becomes three over six, and then I can do the same thing with one third. So what do I have to multiply three by to get to six? I have to multiply it by two. Three times two is six. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So this becomes two over six. And from here, now I can do whatever operation that I want with them in terms of addition or subtraction. So, okay. This is kind of the idea. So let's apply that now to one six and one tenth. And I've got all the work here from earlier. And this is actually like, you're about to see why it's good to write all this work. So now I've got one six and I say, okay, what do I multiply one six by to get to 30? And let's say that I'm having a moment where I'm like, oh man, I can't think of what to multiply six by. So I want you to look at all of this work that we have here. So even if you're like, oh, this is so simple that I can get through this, just, just hold on for a second because we're trying to appreciate the logic here, which is going to serve us well as we move forward. Okay, so I know that six is this two times three, and I can see now that the LCD is two times three times five. So one of the reasons that you want to write down all of this work is also if you're having a moment where you're like, I can't think of what to multiply by, you literally can just compare these two now and say, okay, if six is two times three and the LCD is two times three times five, what do I need to multiply by? And you can almost now see it's like a map that's telling you to multiply by five, you see? And so this is why having all that work is really, really nice. And then you just multiply whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top, bada bing, bada boom. And the same thing can be said of one tenth. So what do I multiply one tenth by, or what do I multiply 10 by to get to 30? I multiply the top and bottom by three, so this becomes three over 30. Okay, so that's the idea. So why don't you just pause the video here and, and try to finish this with one of our other examples, 1 12th and 1 8th. And again, I've got the road map up here. And you can hit play when you think you've got it. Okay, so I've got 1 12th. So I need to multiply 12 by 2 on top and on bottom. So this becomes 2 over 24. And then for my other one, so I've got 1 over 8. So what do I need to multiply 8 by to get to 24? I need to multiply the top and bottom by 3. And so this is going to be 3 over 24. Okay, so that's just a quick review of how this worked with fractions, and we can kind of go wherever we want from there. So if you found this video helpful, I would love it if you would hit the like button or the subscribe button. And
and I'm going to leave the video at that. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.